Good day, folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you an excerpt from a DVD series called Focus on Trapping. It was designed here in Canada, and it was designed to teach people or show people the proper methods for trapping, how to do it, how to handle the fur, all of those things. Great information for the beginner. Also great for the experienced trapper that wants just a little bit of a refresher or some new ideas for sets or anything like that. If you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We certainly do appreciate the support. And uh, if you like the videos, feel free to comment. So without further ado, here we go. Focus on trapping. How many of us can boast we've seen a marten in the forest? Probably not very many, since this small mammal is primarily nocturnal and seldom comes out in the daytime. It lives mainly in the vast expanses of mature forests, quite far from civilization. Its favorite haunts seem to be coniferous and mature mixed forests near lakes. In fact, as long as there's a stream nearby, this lithe, agile animal will establish its lair in the most inaccessible places. The pine marten is one of the few fur-bearing animals that climb trees readily. It jumps from branch to branch with the ease of the squirrel it is constantly chasing. In fact, the marten could be nicknamed the jumper. Somewhat like a trapper, the marten is always on the move, except in the springtime when the females give birth. It is a fierce and insatiably curious creature with very keen reflexes. The marten belongs to the Mustelidae family, along with its cousins, the weasel, mink, skunk, otter, and fisher. Just like these species, the marten has anal scent glands that it uses to mark out its territory and signal its presence during the mating season. Look, our trapper must have sensed something. Let's follow him. Maybe we can learn a few of his secrets. Although the marten makes life particularly difficult for the squirrel, it actually eats all kinds of small animals, including rabbits, partridge, and other birds and rodents. While it is primarily carnivorous, this opportunistic animal will eat just about anything it finds in its path. Depending on the season, the menu may include raspberries, wild strawberries, mountain ashberries, sometimes even carrion. The greedy marten is easily attracted by the smell of bait. I use this trick all the time. Like this trapper, I rub the bait on the trunk of the tree to which I plan to attach the trap. This leads the marten directly to the trap. This trapper has decided to use a box for his set. Always use bait when trapping with a box. The marten is very fond of freshly killed beaver, muskrat, or fish. The trapper attaches the bait securely to the screen inside the box. The screen has several purposes. It allows the animal to see the bait from both sides, lets the smell of the meat circulate, and gives the marten a sense of security since it can see daylight on the other side of the box. Finally, the screen allows birds to feed without going inside the marten box. This way, you won't accidentally take an unwanted species. There are different ways to trap marten with a box. Our trapper has decided to set this one on a pole attached horizontally to a tree. The pole should be at least 1.5 meters from the ground. If it is any lower, the trapped marten may rest on the ground where mice, small rodents, or predators will soon damage the fur. Raise the log as the snow accumulates on the ground. Choose a dry pole, preferably 10 to 13 centimeters in diameter, with the bark still on, since the sap from a fir or spruce tree can damage the marten's fur. Bark also gives the marten a foothold when there is snow or ice on the log. The box must stay in place on the log. To prevent it from turning, it is often necessary to plane the part of the log where the box will be attached. I usually place the box about half a meter from the end of the log, quite far from the supporting tree. 
You may think some of these details are superfluous, needlessly lengthening the time it takes to set your traps. But it's better to take some extra time than to miss a catch. Trapping is a bit like cooking. If you leave out one ingredient, the result may be very disappointing. It is easier and more practical to attach the box to the log with wire. But if I forget my roll or run out, I use nails. The box may be made of wood or some other material and should be large enough to hold a Conibear 120 or Conibear 126 trap. The main advantage of the Martin box is that it keeps the trap sheltered from the elements. I find this particularly practical when there are heavy snowfalls. I don't have to worry about my traps because I know they're protected and will still work properly. Certain details should be observed when setting the trap. First of all, make sure the trigger wires are well spread so the animal cannot get inside without springing the trap. The trigger should be positioned near the outside of the box, that is facing the marten, so that the animal will be caught as soon as it touches it. Finally, it's better to position the trap with the trigger at the top, hanging down. This helps you avoid trapping smaller unwanted animals, such as weasels and squirrels. Unlike the marten, these animals can come and go in the box if the trigger is above them, but will spring the trap if the trigger is placed down below. The trapper carefully places the springs of the trap in the openings on either side of the box. The openings in the box should not be too narrow and long enough. When the trap is activated, the pressure of the springs should propel it completely out of the box and strike the animal correctly. After installing the trap, our trapper removes the safety hooks from the springs to make his trap operational and fastens the chain securely. Look, a visitor. Make sure you cut off any branches the marten could use to avoid going directly to the trap and any that might prevent the trap from being propelled out of the box. They say it takes about eight seconds for a whiskey jack to track down a carcass in the woods. It must be true. In any case, we want them around. Their cries and activity around the bait will attract predators, including the marten, who now knows there's food nearby. When trapping a fur-bearing animal, you must be very familiar with your territory's capacity. Make sure you harvest it carefully and humanely. I have a few tricks I use to make sure I have a good harvest every year. I leave some of the marten boxes in place on my land from one year to the next. Before the season opens, I bait them so that the marten will get used to coming there to feed regularly. Once the season begins, all I have to do is set my traps and begin harvesting. In addition, to make sure there's always a new generation of marten, I leave a beaver carcass out in late February so that the female marten will have more to eat before giving birth. Other wildlife, such as birds, benefit from this as well. There are different ways of using the marten box. There is one main advantage to placing it on a pole. It protects the marten from other wildlife and cools more quickly, which also prevents damage to the fur. At certain times of the season, however, although nobody really knows why, marten are reluctant to climb trees then you should put the marten box on the ground. If you do, it is especially important to bait the box, since the smell of the meat will spread even better at ground level. This is what the experienced trapper does. 
He slides the box between two trees close enough together so that it will be wedged between them. If the box seems too high off the ground, the trapper makes a small staircase with a rock or a piece of dry wood as an invitation to the marten to climb up. He must, however, take care that the staircase will not prevent the trap from being pushed out of the box. Whenever possible, I avoid leaving plywood boxes near the ground for too long since rabbits and porcupines love the salt found in the glue and they can very easily, over a season, damage the boxes with their gnawing. Whenever possible, you should tie the two trees together, as this trapper is doing, so that the box is firmly wedged between them. This way you can be sure it will stay securely in place if the trap is sprung or if overcurious animals rub against it. As I mentioned before, this is a very effective technique, but it has one big disadvantage. The captured animal lies on or near the ground. You must therefore check your traps often or you'll likely find the furs all but ruined. This is a, a very quick and easy way to set a Martin box. Unlike the whiskey jack, the marten is very discreet. It leaves few traces besides droppings and footprints. Its prints can be clearly distinguished after the first snowfall. In winter, the bottom of the marten's feet are covered with thick fleece in the shape of a snowshoe. This allows it to glide easily over the snow. Its prints are similar to those of the mink or ermine, but bigger and more widely spaced. Have a closer look. Number one, marten tracks. Number two, mink tracks, and number three, weasel tracks. It's clear that the trapper who set this trap really knew his stuff. Well, yes, I managed to trap this magnificent marten just by setting my trap in a place that was tailor-made for it, that is, a sloping tree trunk. It just goes to show that Mother Nature is on the trapper's side sometimes. You may have noticed that this trap is not protected by a box. Although useful, a box is not indispensable for trapping marten. You can attach a trap directly to a tree trunk. This method is just as effective and it is quick and easy since you can readily find all the materials you need on the spot. 
If you don't have my luck in finding a tree branch that slopes naturally, all you have to do is attach one yourself with some wire or nails. The raised end of the log should extend beyond the supporting tree by about 1.8 meters. As with the box, you need bait to attract the marten. Make sure you rub the bait over the whole log, as this trapper is doing, to encourage the marten to follow the smell up the log. Fasten the bait to a point quite far from the supporting tree so the marten cannot climb up the tree trunk and jump over the trap to reach the bait. The recommended distance is approximately 15 centimeters from the end of the pole. You should still use a Conibear 120 or 126 trap, whether you use a box or not. This trap is strong enough to kill the animal instantaneously. Place it 45 centimeters away from the bait and at least 1.5 meters above the ground. Remember to make sure the marten, once trapped, will not touch the ground. There are different ways to keep the trap in place on a log. After removing the safety hooks from the trap, this trapper has decided to insert a supple green branch through the springs, passing it under the log. This is a simple technique and the branch creates sufficient tension to hold the trap securely in place. Since there is no box protecting this trap, it's better to choose a site where the forest cover is quite dense and the trees will protect the trap from storms and snow. As the marten likes to leap and jump, we must find a way to prevent it from jumping over the trap. Placing small fir branches through the springs and around the trap will discourage it from jumping and force it to head through the trap to reach the bait. Don't forget about birds. Birds which come to peck at the bait are very likely to back into the trap and be caught. This problem can be avoided by placing a small branch between the trap and the bait. After setting the trap, the trapper attaches the chain to the log, fastening it between the trap and the bait so that it will not interfere with the trap's operation. When you remove your traps at the end of the season, remember to loosen or remove all the wire used to hold the traps in place. This will prevent live trees from being permanently damaged. Good trappers always take care of the environment. It's in their own best interests. When you arrange branches around the trap, make sure they will not interfere with the trap. It's better not to use too many. When the marten walks on the log, it must be able to see the bait clearly through the trap. Don't forget that the branches will tend to flatten out. You can adapt this technique to trap fisher, but use Conibear 220 or 160 traps, which are much bigger and more powerful than 120 or 126. Take a good look at this ideal site for a marten trap. Here it is in its natural state. This is the same site after a trim, ready for the trap to be installed. The branches have been cleared away and a pole has been attached to the trunk. No doubt some of you would like to know the secret to preparing a site so quickly. Admittedly, so would I. This set is similar to the preceding one, but this time our trappers have decided to place the log horizontally rather than on a slant. The tips given for the last set apply here as well. Attach the trap to the log quite far from the supporting tree so that the marten has to go through the trap. You should also cut off any branches the marten could use to jump over the trap to reach the bait without getting caught in it. To attach the trap to the log, this trapper has chosen the three nail system. He places two nails in a straight line 10 centimeters apart he then puts a third nail two or three centimeters from the center point of the line formed by the first two. The three nails form a triangle. There should still be enough space between them to hold the trap firmly in place without interfering with its action. 
the trigger must still be quite sensitive. It is very important to place the jaws of the trap outside the nails to prevent it from moving. Once the trap is well positioned, the springs are swung upwards and the safety hooks removed. Now the trapper is rubbing a lure made of beaver oil sacs on the log to attract the marten to the trap. The perfume of the lure combined with the scent of bait cannot help but arouse the curiosity of any marten in the area. Now your guaranteed success, believe you me. Obviously, you should never forget to attach the chain. Fasten it between the trap and the bait so that it will not prevent the trap from being sprung. Finally, insert a few spruce, fir, or pine branches through the coils of the springs to discourage the marten from jumping right over the trap to devour the bait. These branches also camouflage the trap from the animal. Okay. Here you can clearly see the correct positioning for the trigger wires. As in the marten box, the wires are pointing downwards and the trigger is placed facing the animal. From this angle, we have a better idea what the marten will see when it approaches the trap. As soon as I finish setting a trap, I always inspect it from the animal's perspective. This gives me a chance to correct any mistakes I may have made and to come up with modifications that will make my techniques even more effective. Instead of driving the three nails directly into the log, I sometimes hold the trap in place with a small stick, three to four centimeters in diameter, nailed to the tree trunk. This raises the trap above the log slightly, putting it almost level with the marten. The trap will thus be more effective when a little snow falls or when ice forms on the log. Remember that the nails must form a triangle with the trap placed outside the nails. I find this system works very well, and here's the proof. As you can see, when I use this method, I can rest assured that the marten I catch will not be reached by little creatures that might ruin it. Watch out! The marten must be removed carefully so as not to damage its fur. Sometimes in cold weather, you may have to take the trap and the frozen marten inside where it's warm so that you can remove the animal without ruining the fur. I recommend that you take some extra traps with you in harvesting to replace any you may have to remove. Most young marten are trapped just before winter starts, in October and November. The females have litters of one to four young in March or April. These young marten leave their mothers when they are three months old. If the curious, unsuspecting marten is an easy animal to trap, each year's young marten are even easier, probably because they are inexperienced and must move around a great deal as they look for territory of their own. Somehow you must manage to follow the marten to the out-of-the-way spots it likes so much. Here we are, surrounded by towering evergreens, and about to watch our trapper set one last trap using an inventive system called the skirt. The advantage of this technique is that it works well in inaccessible places. After attaching a trap to a tree trunk, the trapper places a little staircase against the tree to encourage the marten to climb up toward the trap. Here, she's using a log 8 to 10 centimeters in diameter. She rests it just slightly below the trap. Usually a natural looking brown color, the trap will blend into the brown of the tree trunk. Place it vertically on the trunk and use the three nail system to keep it in place. You should fasten the trap quite high up so you will not find it buried under snow during the trapping season. The bait should be placed 15 centimeters above the trap. Before attaching it, you should always rub it on the staircase and around the trap to release a little of the odor into the air and let the marten know there's food in the area. Now, we are ready to begin the skirt.
First, place some wire around the tree, 30 centimeters above the bait. Then slide some evergreen branches under this wire all around the trap. There should be enough to completely hide both the trap and the bait. One advantage of this system is that it effectively protects the trap and bait both from birds and from the caprices of Mother Nature. It may take some time to install, but it will save you considerable trouble if there's a snowstorm. In addition, all the materials you will need are easily found on the spot. If you have to walk several kilometers to get to your trapping area, you will particularly appreciate this technique because you will have only the bare minimum to carry. When you think the trap and bait are sufficiently covered, use a flexible branch held in place by wire to surround the evergreen branches and hold them tight so that the skirt remains firm and compact. You must make very sure that there is no opening besides the one at the bottom that the marten could use to reach the bait without going through the trap. Finally, clear the bottom of the skirt so that the animal can't miss the way in. Once the trap is completely installed, Fasten the chain as high as possible, at least 45 centimeters from the tree trunk. There, now everything is ready. All you have to do is wait for any peeping toms or other marten to peer under the skirt. No doubt you can hardly wait to pick up your traps, axe, pliers and wire and head for the woods like a real professional. But first of all, let me give you a few reminders. It's important to inspect your traps as often as possible. Harvest your renewable resource wisely to ensure its continued existence for future generations. Your sons and daughters will be the trappers of tomorrow. <laughs>